Have you ever wondered if your workout program is completely shit? A subscriber of mine put their workout program in my comment section and I grabbed it and threw it on this whiteboard and I'm going to break it down in front of you. Firstly, let's go through the workout program. Day one, we have legs. Hip thrust, leg press, quads focus. Walking lunges, leg curl, calf raise. Day two, we have upper body. Lat pull down, cable row, bench press, shoulder press, lat raise, tricep push down, cable curl. Then we have a rest day. Thursday, or well, day four, we have legs, which is the third workout. Squat, Bulgarian split squat, back extension, leg extension, and calf raise. Then rest day. Then we have a full body day. Romanian deadlifts or RDL. Hip thrust, machine kick back, close grip lat pull down, machine row, incline press, skull crusher, hammer curl, and then Sunday, take another rest. One thing I will say is this is not a workout program. This is a bunch of exercises. I don't know how many sets and reps we're doing. I don't know what intensity we're training at. I don't know how long the rest periods are, but I'm going to give my best feedback on this program based just off the exercises. And I'll kind of guess that we're doing three sets of somewhere between six to 15 reps, which is very general, but let's get into it. Come on, bro, just shut up and get on with it. Let's go. First of all, let's look at the workout split. We have a leg day, upper day, leg day, and then a full body day. Full body day? A way that I would prefer to program this is doing full body days every single day, doing a full body push day on day one, and a full body pull day on day two. And then you can repeat those same workouts if you want, if you're somewhere between beginner and intermediate because you don't need to do a ton of new exercises to get a great stimulus when you're first starting in the gym. But if you're more advanced, intermediate to advanced, you could have full body push one, full body push two, and then full body pull one, and then full body pull two. So you actually have four different workouts, but the structure is full body push and full body pull. And the reason that I like this split is because if you're doing a full body push day, so you're doing every muscle that pushes with the lower body too, so quads and calves, lower body department, then in the upper body department, we're doing chest, shoulders, and triceps. And then day two, we're doing full body pull. We would do our pulling muscles in the lower body, so we would do hamstrings and glutes. And then with our upper body, we'd be doing back and biceps. And then you can sprinkle in accessory work, ab work, forearm work, trap work, any kind of other work that you want to throw in there on top. And then the same structure would be for the other two days. And the reason I like this is because when you're doing all the pushing muscles, the next day you'll be doing the pulling muscles. So they actually won't interfere with any of the exercises you're doing in the next day. Then you take a rest day. So then your push muscles will be recovered so that you can do your push day. And then you do your pull day after that. They've had two days in between. And then you take a rest day and then you go again. I've never written a program like this. I'm not saying it's wrong. I think there could be a better way to help yourself to be fresh and recovered in the workouts. A positive with this workout, for women, often their goal is to grow the booty. Let's not beat around the bush here. We're trying to grow some glutes here. And we're training the glutes three days per week or three times per week, which is a really good sign. And it's going to help the glutes grow at a good frequency. And we're also training the quads three times a week as well. We're training the hamstrings here directly. We're training them here as well. And we're also training them in the RDL. Overall, your lower body is getting some pretty decent training. You're hitting most body parts in your lower body three times per week. So that's a big tick in my book. With the upper body, we're only training it twice in the week, which is completely fine. But since it has a lower frequency, what you could consider is training at a higher intensity because it's only twice a week. You can afford to smash your upper body a bit more because you have more time to recover. If you look at the layout of this program, on Tuesday, you're training upper body. And then the next time you're training upper body is a Saturday. So you have a ton of time after this workout to recover and smash it on the full body day when you're doing the upper body day there. So a slight negative of this program is it's quite inconsistent in terms of how long it will take per workout. I don't know the sets and reps, like I said at the start of this video, but day one's relatively short. You're only doing five exercises. Day two, it's a little bit longer. You're doing seven exercises. Legs here, you're doing five exercises, relatively short. And then over here, we're doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight over here. So that's one thing that I like to do is just keep the training relatively consistent so that I know, or my client knows that they're blocking out 60 minutes, 75 minutes, instead of, oh, okay, you know, Monday, you have 45 minutes, then you're doing 60 minutes, then you're doing uh, 45, and then you've got a two hour session over here. It's just a bit annoying. 
Maybe though, this person has more time in the weekend to train, so that's why the Saturday is a bit of a longer session. And that does make sense. It just really depends. I don't know anything about this person. I'm just here to help. With the upper body, I like the structure of this program. There's a slight bias towards the shoulders, which I don't mind in a female physique because I've made a lot of videos about the hourglass physique and so many younger women on TikTok want this hourglass physique. It's like the next craze and they consider wearing corsets and they ask me all these stupid questions around, oh, should I do this workout? And should I do Daisy Keach's workout? Should I do this random influencer's workout? There's a lot of BS out there on the internet, but one thing I do know about the hourglass physique, if you're trying to create it, is that you want to grow your shoulders and grow your glutes because if you have wider shoulders and wider glutes or bigger glutes, then you are going to give the illusion of an hourglass physique. We can't really make our waist smaller. The only way to do that is to lose weight. But once you get to a point, like you can't shave your hips off. I don't know, can you, can you do that? If you have weight to lose, you can shrink your waist just from losing weight. But once you get to a point where you can't lose any more weight, you need to start building some muscle. Build some shoulders, build some glutes, and you're gonna get that hourglass physique or make some progress towards it. So I like that we're hitting lats with hitting cable row. If your goal is the hourglass physique, let's just run with it. The cable row, you'd wanna keep a neutral grip, shoulder blades down, and really squeeze those lats underneath here. So you could get some double love for the lats here. Bench press, shoulder press, this is cool because it's ticking all the boxes of the upper body movements. We got some horizontal push with the bench press, some vertical push with the shoulder press. We got some horizontal pull with the cable row and we got some vertical pull with the lat pull down. That's pretty much ticking every box in the upper body. Then we have some uh, extra shoulder work with the lat raise, like we said, to grow that hourglass figure or just grow the delts. And then we have some arm work, which is cool to get that accessory work in, which is cool just to keep that well-rounded physique. I do like this upper body day. One critique I do have though is on this day, we're doing lat pull downs. And then on the second day, on the second time around when we train upper body, we're doing lat pull downs again. It does say close grip, but I don't really like close grip lat pull downs anyway. What I would rather do is on this day where you have a few more days to recover, instead of doing a lat pull down, do a pull up. And if you can't do a pull up, do an assisted pull up. And if you're a pull up queen, yes queen, then you can do weighted pull up. But what I would do is chuck them, chuck some quite intense exercises on this day because you have some days to recover. So chin ups, instead of cable row, do a barbell bent over row because you can do your cable row here. Well, you're doing a machine row on this day. You may as well do a bent over row. You got bench press, you got shoulder press, that's awesome. You got lateral raises, that's cool. But even with triceps and cable curls, instead of that, get the big boy movements out or big girl movements out. Barbell curls, instead of tricep push down, tricep dip, maybe. Assisted if you can't do body weight. But this day, you got a lot of time to rest. I'd really put yourself to work. Let's look at day three here. A bit more of a quad dominant day than this day. We have squats, Bulgarian split squats, this is glute focused as well. I didn't write that down. So the step for the Bulgarian split squat would be a bit larger. So there's more of a 90 degree angle uh, at the leg, which would get more glutes. So to get a bit more variation, what I would do here is do a squat with heel elevated. So it's going to be more quad focused. And then I would do the Bulgarian split squat, which is going to be a bit more glute focused. Then we have back extension. Now with this, I would do the 45 degree back extension with a rounded back, switch off the lower back, turn on the abs, turn on the glutes, and you're gonna get some extra glute work on top of these exercises which do work the glutes. And then we got some quad isolation here. This day is pretty good. Critique though, you've done calf raises on over here, so I would do a different type of calf raise. So if you're doing a calf raise on a calf raise machine, over here on day three, I would do a calf raise on a leg press machine. It's just gonna be slightly different. Looking at this last day, it's a bit of a beast. It's a bit long, which is why I said I like the full body push, full body pull day, because it instead of having a ton of exercise on the last day to try and jam a lot of stuff in, you can just evenly spread it out throughout the week. But I like that if we look at each kind of leg day, this is a full body day, but let's just see it as a leg day for now. We're starting with different things. So day one is a hip thrust which is cool. Day two or lower body day two, we have a squat, which is cool because it's different, but it's still hitting the glutes. And then RDL is still hitting the glutes as well. So we have like three glute compounds at the start of each day. So that's why I kind of say this is a bit of an hourglass body focused workout because we are hitting the glutes three times a week in a pretty solid way. One thing you could also do, we're doing a hip thrust over here. We are doing it again on Saturday and then we're gonna do it again on Monday, which is pretty close. So what we could do instead right here is do a cast glute bridge which is a smaller type of, of smaller range of motion hip thrust pretty much. Or you could do a single leg hip extension, which is still a hip thrust, but it's just a bit of a lighter version. You could go a bit higher reps and then this could be a bit heavier. Something like that. We have a machine kickback. Cool, you got some glute accessories, close grip lat pull down. 
So like I said, we could just leave this as a normal lat pull down and do some assisted pull ups over here. Machine row, incline chest press. That's fine. That's fine. And then we have some skull crushers and hammer curls. One thing I do like with the tricep training is we are mixing up the resistance profiles of the exercise. So tricep push down, it's hardest when your arm is straight. Skull crusher is hardest when your arm is bent. So this is hard for the triceps in the stretched position. And this is hard in the triceps in the shortened position. So we're giving our triceps a bit of variety to grow from. But with the cable curl and the hammer curl, they have pretty similar resistance profiles. So what I would do if, if this is gonna stay the cable curl where you're just standing and curling like that, what you could do over here with the hammer curl, lean back a bit, mate, chill out. Incline, dumbbell, hammer curl, winner, winner, chicken dinner because then your biceps are seeing two different ways of training. You're getting a big stretch with the incline dumbbell hammer curl and with the cable curl it's hardest kind of at the midpoint to the highest point so then once again your biceps are seeing something different to respond to. That's going to wrap up the video. Shout out to, I didn't even say the person's name who this was, it's at Nurmerez4170. I'll put that up on the screen. I hope that helps. I hope you see this. For us this is 90 minutes 45 of recording for not mine. If you want to have a video like this, get your workout program reviewed or get your question answered, make sure you're putting your questions in the comment section of these videos because I do read them, I get back to them, and I even create videos for them. And if you found this video helpful, check out this video where I answered a question, what to do when you've taken two years of training, how do you get back into it? Watch the video.